what this report really tries to do is to uh, bridge the gap between an industry, our industry of SRI practitioners, and the policy world. Um, one of the main aspects of Eurosif's mission is really to uh, increase awareness of SRI by pushing forward in terms of advocacy and lobbying. What this report does is really bring forward the different perspectives of those policymakers and making the direct link between the growth uh, and the evolution of the different strategies and the different policy dynamics at national and European level. I mean, there's no question, I don't think, for in anybody's mind today that the direction of travel is set. The, the view that environmental, social and corporate governance issues comprise sources of risk and return has been made. I mean, there's many studies and evidence that point to that. The only question is, is the pace of change that we will see in different players and different participants in the market. We have 30 years of experience in the ESG strategies. And one of our strategies uh, is very much innovative. And we wanted to share it as a case study in the Eurasif SRI survey. Because of the prevalent concentrated ownership in emerging markets, uh, the risks of corporate governance are quite high. And investors are really cautious about the existence of these large majority shareholders, particularly when they are governments, because they may pursue their own agenda, uh, which is sometimes very different from the agenda of minority shareholders. So we applied three governance screens, along with the reputational and ethical ESG screens, uh, to address these risks. And the screens are are firstly looking at majority owned companies, secondly looking at the existence of independent directors on the board uh, with a minimum of 30% and thirdly looking at the existence of both audit and remuneration committees uh, because these mechanisms of independent control may help mitigate uh, these risks um, of corporate governance that investors are most cautious about. There's a wide range of uh, ESG implementation approaches available in the market for the moment. And if you look at Eurosif, Eurosif uh, classifies them from the kind of exclusionary screenings where you exclude companies based on uh, ethical, moral or norms-based considerations to the more advanced approaches where you active approach like engagement proxy voting and more sophisticated integration approaches. At Candrum, uh, the core of our integration approach is best in class. What is best in class? Best in class in a way is a relatively uh, simple concept. You rank, pick and invest in those stocks that classify best based on a uh, set of environmental, social and governance criteria and that within its best in class, so that within a sector or a peer group. A best in class integration approach bears much resemblance with a traditional investment strategy in that it applies the same kind of risk return principles as any prudent investor would do. However, by integrating non-financial, environmental, social and governance issues into the investment framework, it makes an ESG investor a better informed investor. France remains the best in class land. That's where this approach is most developed and, and, and more widespread. But though, we can see some evolutions. The main of these concerns norm-based screening. There is a growing importance by uh, institutional investors about norms like global compact, ILO requirements about social issues, and this is gaining momentum among the, uh, the asset management in France. France has issued a law about energy transition, demanding that institutional investors include more and more of green investments, whatever infrastructure or low carbon funds or green bonds is up to their choice, but they must really now join the path to a low carbon economy. And the thematic investment is really about this. So this to me explains the 
a very significant growth on this market. So the fact is that uh, environmental, social and governance uh, ESG factors integration has increased substantially over the last few years and it's a good point because the uh, investors, asset managers or asset owners have understood that these ESG issues may have an impact on risk and return but the big challenge today is the shift from commitment to the practice and in brief it means that we have to integrate environmental social and governance factors as an integral part of the investment decision process and not uh, as a sideshow next to the financial analysis just simple because the environmental social and governance factors are economic factors.